Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. The purpose of this video is to show you a way of pre-populating forms with reference data. And the added bonus here is you can actually do it with multiple references. So why might this be important or useful to you? Well, there are times when you have forms which you want to use for feedback, for example, and you want to know who the person is who's providing the feedback. Or there's a reference, so you're getting it to look up data from another sheet. In this way, it saves the person filling out or having to put in information manually, and therefore there's a risk of error. And so it saves time, but it also means that then your lookup references or cross-sheet references can work, and it can pull in data that's really useful from other sheets and do calculations for you. So let's have a look at what I mean by this. So in a previous video, where I've done the time it takes to time a job, this I've used this here in this instance. And really what I wanted to do on that is I wanted to measure the time it takes to, do, um, to complete the job, and I wanted to pre-populate what was the job reference here. By using the job reference, it can look at another sheet I have with the form data, which is when did the job actually start and when did the job actually finish. By having this reference number, it can go back and look at the sheet here and see the start time and the finish time and bring this data into the other sheet, which then enables it to do a calculation to say how long the job actually took to take um, took to do. So in order to get this data in, it's dynamic and it will depend on in each individual job item. So you want to bring in the unique reference number to pull in. Now, the key here is you can do it on multiple ones, not just one, by using a query string. And I'll show you that in a moment. But in, in essence, how do you actually create this in the first place? Well, the first bit is that you're going to have a formula which has the reference for um, the link for the form in the first place. So in this case, I'm going to go back to the sheet which this pulls the data into. And I've previously created a form here. So if I go to Manage Forms and I go and show you um, and open up the form. In this case, I've got the form and it's got the job reference and it's got the date and I've got it set up previously here in that way. Just close that back down for a moment. And on that piece, if I want to therefore get the reference for the phone, I want to get the um, the coding of that. I've actually pre-copied it here and I've got it in the summary sheets here. So you can see this is the reference for there. And so what I have done is in terms of for this tracker sheet, you can see here, that's where the reference is. But what I've got created press too far there. Let me just dig on this so you can see the formula. What I've got is I have inserted the formula into the formula. I've inserted the reference, which is here. And then after it, the most important bit is I've added a question mark and then I've given it the name of the field, which is going to appear in the form. So job ref. And so on the form, it has the field job ref and then it adds in and it pulls this from here. So here you can see, here's the reference. And then onto the form in the other sheet, it's got job ref. And so it's gonna pre-populate that with that bit of information here. So again, if I just jump across and show you, you've got job ref and it's pre-populated with that code. So again, how do you break that down? Let me just give it a bit more space so you can see the actual formula here. And I'm gonna zoom in. So I've created some spaces on this for you. But the key point is here, I've added in the link to the form. So you start off with a formula and you put in the speech marks or inverted commas, and you put in that formula there. And after, at the end of that, you need to add in a question mark without any of these spaces. So I'm just gonna take these spaces back out. And then the most important bit is then you put in what is the field that is in the form. So again, that needs to be there. And a really important point is there cannot be any spaces between these words is the first bit. And then the second piece is that this needs to be the actual name of the field. If you change that in your form, so again, if I just go back to the form, if you go and when you create the form and you decide that you actually want to make some changes to the form, if we go to edit form, and instead of calling it job ref, you're going to call it job space reference, that won't work. 
it always has to be the actual name of that field setting there. So again, I'm going to get rid of this bit. So otherwise it won't work. I'm going to come back out of this. So again, back to this form here, you insert the field of the receiving form and then you put equals and then you close that part of the formula. What you then need to do is put a plus sign and what you're telling it to do then is bring in the other part of the formula, which is the actual reference that you're using. In this case, the reference is the reference column here and it's T0001. So again, just so you can see the formula, let me zoom in. That's the formula in this case and it's got reference at row. By using at row, it will always pull the one from the relevant row that you're using. So you're using the at row formula here. So if I come out of that, if you see then the formula, it says job ref equals T0001 on this bit. So what happens when I click on that form? In this case, it's gonna open up the form and you can see it's pre-populated with 001 on that bit. That's really useful because when I filled out this form, and again, I've already used this one, that went into the sheet here, T001, and it said that was recorded, and then it had the finish time here. So let me just give you a quick demonstration of how this works. So the form is filled out, it's pre-populated. I'm gonna say this job starts, and I'm gonna press submit. In this case, it says keep it open to capture the finish time. So I'm just gonna show you some other pieces as we go, and so there's a bit of time difference between. So what I said at the beginning is what is actually, again, a re really interesting opportunity here is if you want to have multiple items included, you can. And you do this by adding a query string. So using the same principle as I've created at the beginning of the formula, let me just zoom in here, you do the formula as the beginning, but if I can just click here so we can see what I've done, if you want to add in multiple items, and again, you can do a multitude of these, what you need to do is after the final part of the first bit of the formula, you need to put plus, and then you need to do an ampersand with, within a speech mark, and then put the next name of the column or the field that shows on the form. So in this case, it's date, and I've got date at row. So again, in an, you put that in an ampersand in speech marks with an equal sign, and then date at row. And then what that's gonna do is it's gonna pull in, it's gonna pull in that information here. Now, if you look at the one below, just to highlight, it will not work if there are any spaces between the words. So there are limitations clearly, in that if you want to include a string of text that you want to bring into the form, you can't do that unless there are underscores in between each one. So you can see in this example, I've got 3D print job. In this example, you can see it breaks because it just has 3D. So if I just go back to this one, or if I, for example, if I just go in, into the the job, well, I can't, can't change that, but on the 3D print job, just need to make a change to the form um, on this case. And so what I'm just gonna do is go into the form, manage forms, and I need to add in a field. So edit. And I'm gonna add in activity in this case and save it. So that pulls through just to demonstrate. And if I go in now and click on this one to do the activity, you can see it's just pulled in 3D because again, it the hyperlink breaks if there's any space in the text. So that hasn't worked properly in that case. If however, in terms of the form, you've got it linked up in terms of across the text. So there's, a, there's no space in between it. And so in this case, I put an underscore. Then if I press this again, you'll see the link works and it pulls through all the information here in terms of 3D print job on that side. So just to kind of recap on this piece, you can have multiple strings here. What I'm just gonna do is show you that if I want to add in another string to the one we've already got, I'm gonna copy this and you can see I've got, I'm gonna have three items added in here. 
on this job here in equals double ref. So what I just need to do is activity at row. And under double ref, I'm going to put an underscore here. So now you can see activity equals double ref. If I click on this link, it's going to open up and it has the job reference pulled through. It's got the activity pulled through and it's got the date pulled through as well. So again, this is pre-populated automatically for you. So there's a multitude of ways that you can use this. Again, limitation being that you cannot have a space between the text. But what it enables you to do is therefore fill out information. And if I just go back to the log which I started previously, in terms of the one which I previously submitted, I'm just trying to go back to the right one. This is the one which we've done previously, 14. I'm going to finish that one. Any reference, so video demo. And I'm going to submit. If I now go back to my time log, I'm going to close the various bits on the form and go back to the sheet here. What you'll be able to see is if I update this now, items 14 have come through and it's got the time in between. What's happened is if I go back to this sheet here and bring this up on 14, we can see that it recorded the time and it's four minutes between me doing the video demo on that side and that's where it's come through. But the powerful piece here is for you to see the formula where you can, how you can add in that reference automatically up front and how you can have multiple items coming through so that then you can have multiple lookups and information or for the person filling out the form, they can then just cross-reference it so they can see it. Again, what you can do on the form to make sure the person doesn't change that is actually hide that as a field. So if I just go back to the form overall, they don't need to see this reference number. You might want them to see the date, for example. So in this case, I just go back to the form. I'm going to edit the form again and what I'm going to do. So there's no risk of them actually deleting, editing, or making a change to the job reference is I'm actually just going to hide that field so they don't actually see it. And equally, the activity, that I'm going to leave in for reference information for them, and I'm going to leave in the date for reference information for them as well. So if we go back to the form here, and then someone now receives a request to fill out the job, if we now press this one, here I'm going to go to the activity. You can see it's hidden the reference net code, so they can't change that bit, but it's got the information for them at the top on that side. So trust this shows you how to do this and gives you inspiration for many uses that you'll be able to apply into your business. So thank you for watching and I'll hopefully get back to doing a lot more videos again soon. Bye for now.